I want mine. Good morning, Hope, for today, fellowship. Everybody happy to be here? I am. It's so good to see all of your smiling faces. Why don't we stand up and look to our right, look to our left, behind, in front, say hello. Tell someone your name. Welcome someone this morning. Father God, thank you so much for this beautiful new day, that your mercies are new every morning. Your faithfulness is great toward us, and we're so thankful to know you, Lord Jesus. God, we just thank you for one another, Lord. Thank you for the sweet fellowship we have with our brothers and sisters in Christ, and we're so grateful for one another. Help us to lift each other up today and pray for one another and love on each other, Lord God by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we just pray, Jesus, that as we come before you this morning, that you would speak to our hearts, our minds, by your Holy Spirit. We want to hear from you this morning, and we want to give you all of our praise, because you're worthy of all honor and glory and praise and all of our worship, Lord Jesus. And so we just pray, God, that you would indeed create in us clean hearts oh god and that you would renew us lord and you would strengthen us this day that um we might be refreshed to continue serving you jesus we just thank you and praise you for all you have planned and for all you have done in jesus name amen amen, amen. we're going to start with god is great and he is amen he's great so sing it with all you've got
of all of us that we live for the glory of Jesus. Amen.
so sensitive to you, Lord God. Every time you, you show us, Lord, areas of your life where we're not honoring you, that we come quickly to you, Lord, for mm. forgiveness and yes. for cleansing, Lord God, and that the cross would never lose its power in our lives and, and our focus, Lord Jesus, all that you have done for us to save us, Lord God. Mm. Keep the cross in the center of our focus, Lord Jesus. Every moment of every day we pray, Lord. And, and make our lives um, truly a blessing to those around us, Lord, yes. that we may shine the truth mm. of the gospel, Lord God, and share it, Lord, with love. And we just thank you and praise you. We pray, Jesus, that you'd open our hearts to your word this morning, that mm. as Pastor Brian preaches, Lord God, you would just um, cut us to the heart and show us what we need to know today and, and how we need to obey your word. And we'd ask all of these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Hope for Today Fellowship International. Sounds important, eh? Good to see all y'all here today. Wow, this is beautiful. We've had a busy week. We had the kids camp. We had the kids camp and uh, that went so well. I tell you, you know, we are so blessed to have Alicia as our, our uh, leader, our kids person, because... Uh, I couldn't do what she did. I would probably be arrested by the end of the week. <laughs> the woman's got patience. She's always got ideas. And the funny thing is, you watch her work with the kids. She loves kids. And, and man, that's something else. I'm telling you. How many people here like children? No, no, don't. <laughs> One or two, not 60. 60 kids. That's what they had, eh? Wow, 60 kids. Man. And you know, some of the parents nowadays, they don't know how to raise their children, so these kids don't know how to just sit and be. We, we call it ADD, but I think it's got something to do with parental loss of interest. Um, anyway, it's different, and, and man, I praise God for those kids that were here. They got to hear the good news about Jesus. They were doing all that scuba stuff, you know. Uh, there was stuff everywhere, but... Uh, I was actually supposed to be helping with sports. It was more I watched Dwayne lead these people in sports. It was good. I'm getting old. I just realized that. It just, it just occurred to me. Man. But I got some good news. Listen, everyone's got to wish me luck. Oh, man. I have a bank appointment this afternoon, and I'm planning on getting enough money to pay off all my debts. I'm so excited, I can hardly get the ski mask on, you know what I mean? Man. Well. Okay, settle down. Oh, yes, question? Not, not so much a question, just more of a statement. Oh. Not only was there 60 kids here, mm -hmm. but a lot of them were, most of them, were from the community, not oh, yeah. kids. Yeah, I didn't hear that number because I left. I skipped out early Friday. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Anyone remember that? There was a lot, eh? We gave them all Bibles and and you know, if Felicia was here, I would have bought her flowers and presented them. No, I wouldn't have. I would have forgot anything. She doesn't like that stuff. But oh, good. It's all about Jesus. And there was a lot of helpers that obviously made that happen. There was. That's great. But it was, again, it's not about just running the kids' church. It's about telling people about Jesus and seeing these young kids. But then the parents come in the last day. Yeah. And getting to hear their kids excited about Jesus. And oh, yeah. Who knows what comes from it. Yeah, yeah. We got some, we got some good footage. Uh, actually, did you make a video for us to show? Uh, no. He, he's a chip off the old block <laughs> next week next week we'll have a video for you okay Paul you do us a video yeah we'll get Chris to make his video excellent excellent yeah 
He is good at videos, eh? Yeah. Wow. So <laughs> this is this is true. This is what it's all about, pointing people to Jesus Christ. And even the parents, we got to talk. We got to meet a lot of the parents. Yeah, they thought they were just dropping off their kid, but it was just a scam to get them in here. And uh, no, just a great time. And I'm, I'm thrilled. I think that was just a fantastic week. I'm ready for a snooze, but you know, that's okay. Okay. So, and we did, um, we did, uh, uh, there was a, a funeral for, for Robin, uh, for Haley, Robin's daughter, a 21 year old. That was on Friday. And, uh, and uh, Hope Cunningham, who is Art Mitchell's daughter, she, she did the, uh, the funeral, and she did an amazing job of presenting the gospel, man, presenting the good news about Jesus Christ. It was so beautiful. And, um, and then Saturday, we did a, a funeral here for, uh, for Sharon Draper's uh, husband, Ken. And uh, John Coleman came and, and did the uh, sermon. And John Coleman... It's so cool because he, he was the pastor here when it was St. James or St. Paul's or whatever, we, some Anglican church, yeah. He was the minister here, and uh, so he had to leave the Anglican church because he loved Jesus too much. And um, I know, I know. So he's, he ministers over at Maple Hill now. He, he plays the drums for them, and, and he preaches once in a while. Just a, a wonderful presentation of, of the good news about Jesus again on Saturday. Now, man, I tell you, this, this week has been fantastic. i got to tell you something else. Mary, you'll laugh at this. This is funny. So well, I'm sitting back here talking to Pastor John. Wait. What? Go ahead. Be careful. Oh, I don't care. No, it's funny. So, so, no, no, funny is good. It doesn't matter who gets hurt. So, I'm talking to John at the back, and, and Ann Barkley walks in. And she comes walking in, she's all, and, and she looks around at everybody's face, and she goes, oh, I know who you're talking. And she goes, aren't I supposed to be here for something else? And I said, no, no, this is what's happening today. And she said, oh, I'm, I've got, I'm a week early. And she takes off and leaves. And, but, but I said, no, 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 stay, stay. It, it'll be okay. This will be a good time of, of praise and worship. And so she sits down. She, we're both sitting at the back there. Halfway through the service, she turns to me. She says, what is this? I said, it's a funeral. <laughs> she, she says, well, you could have told me that when I was talking to the widow. She said, I didn't know her husband died. She says, I'm making light of everything. I said, no, that's good. That's good. It was funny. So I wanted to tell you that so everybody bug in tonight when she shows up. That was beautiful. But, but you know what? God puts you in places sometimes. Like Anne will think that's because her mind's leaving her. It's not. God had a plan and he wanted her to be here. I tell you, she had such a nice conversation with, with uh, Sharon. I, was, I just thought, isn't that beautiful? She had no idea she was coming to the funeral. <laughs> God is good. Yeah, there you go. Hey, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time together. And we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your sense of humor. You're, you're such a great God. And, and you love it when we praise you. But you also love it when we laugh. Because, because laughter is, is, is another way of getting through this life. Lord, you're such a good God. You're such a good God. When we think back on this kid's week. The things that you did, the, the little lives that you touched. God, it's, it's so important that little children hear the good news about Jesus before they get their mind all twisted and bent around by what the society's teaching. It's, it's so important while they're, they're gobbling up everything that they can possibly learn that we teach them about Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Thank you for those little lives that give their life to Jesus. They're now children of God. Oh, thank you so much, Lord. We pray for them. We pray that they would stay strong, that they would walk with you, that they would never have to go through some of the things that some of us have gone through, that, Father, they would be protected from that, that they would enjoy a life in Christ. Help them to hold tight, to stand strong on that solid rock. We thank you. Help us to be a, a body of followers who will encourage those children. And help them, to disciple them, to help them to grow, to be men and women of God. 
We thank you so much. Thank you for this time together. Speak to us through your word, through the power of your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. We're in John chapter 12, verses 37 to 50. A little bit of reading, but a very strange, very strange story, the way that Jesus um, presents this. Uh, it's really, it's the theology of unbelief. If there's such a thing, I just made that title up, theology. But believe Jesus' word. Can you hear the power just flowing through me? Why does Satan hate me, eh? I know. Do you know what's funny? At the uh, at the funeral. They're supposed to play the song Imagine, but it's Imagine by John Lennon. Imagine there's no heaven. It isn't hard to do. You know, that, that, like it's like an evil song. It sounds so pretty. Yeah. So, so that was supposed to be the first song played at the funeral. John goes to play it, computer shuts off. It was fantastic. Then we got to the second song, which was a beautiful song. The third song had to play, but, but it was, uh, Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah, which really has nothing to do with Hallelujah. In case you don't know, Hallelujah means praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise God. And, and that song is, you know, take me to the kitchen chair, break my throat and cut my hair, singing Hallelujah. Like, what the? Yeah. So anyway, we were, we were glad that, that uh, God shut down the computer for one of those songs. They would have got two songs that were... But it's nice because it, it meant a lot to, to, to Sharon's, uh, his, her husband was a, a pianist. He, he, he actually used to play the guitar, but he got arthritis really bad and he couldn't play anymore. So he taught himself how to play the keyboard. And, and he was playing, and those were some of the songs that he liked. That's why they were picked. It's not, not that Sharon's a rock and roller or anything. So are we okay now? Do you want me to tell another story? Nope, okay. <laughs> Watch this. Okay, now we okay? I don't know. <laughs> Keep short note. John, chapter 12, verse 37 to 50. Though Jesus had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe. That's incredible. That's it. When you read that, you think, yeah, he just raised a guy from the dead. He healed a lame guy. He healed a blind guy. He did all these things before them, and they still don't believe him. And you're sitting there going, yeah, if I had seen that, I would have believed. Not necessarily. Verse 38, so that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what we heard from what they heard from us? And, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Why don't they believe is what Isaiah is asking. Therefore, they could not believe. For again, Isaiah said, he, God, has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart. Lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. It, it's, not, it's not that God didn't want them to believe. People read that and they go, you see, God, sometimes he doesn't want people to follow him. So he blinds them and he hardens their heart. That's not what he does. What, what it is, it's like Romans chapter 2 where, 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 where it says that, that God tried to reach them, tried to reach them. They ignored him. They, they rejected him. And finally he... That's good. Okay. You see? It was just my beard rubbing against it. So, so Romans chapter 2, God says, God, they keep rejecting God, and he, finally he says, I turn them over to the, to the sinful desires, the passions of their flesh. So it comes a point when God turns them. When, when people say God hardened Pharaoh's heart in, in, in the story in Exodus, 
If you read that story, God did harden Pharaoh's heart, but not the first time. The first time God did a miracle, and, and it says Pharaoh rejected, he hardened his heart. Then Pharaoh hardened his heart. Then Pharaoh hardened his and then And then it starts, and God hardened his heart. And God hardened his heart. It, when we reject God, we, we, uh, when we were singing, oh, there's a good song. That, those were the words of King David. <clears throat> um, Restore unto me the joy of my... Don't, don't take not your Holy Spirit from me. This is So King David had sinned, and then he realized, his friend pointed out to him his sin, and he realized what he had done, and he cried out to God, and he said, he said, create in me a clean heart, O God. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Because this is what happens when we sin... We reject God, we reject God. Comes a point when he takes his Holy Spirit from us. He turns us over to the desires of our flesh. And, and at that point, our hearts are hardened. But we did it. Ultimately, we, God, yes, God turned us over to the desires of our He left us alone. He took away his spirit from us. But ultimately, it was our choice. We rejected him. So it's us hardening our hearts. Yes, God did harden our hearts in that sense. But it was our choice. Okay, just so you understand that. So, uh, he is blinded there. Okay, I, now verse 41. Isaiah said these things because he saw Jesus' glory and he spoke of him. Nevertheless, many of the authorities, those people that were, that were in, in, in high places in the religious organization of, of Judaism, many even of the authorities believed in Jesus but for fear of the Pharisees, they didn't confess it so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. Well, why, why would they do that? Were they embarrassed about Jesus? No, well, it says right here, for they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. They wouldn't confess that they loved God because of what they had seen. and what They, they didn't confess that they believed. They said they believed, but they didn't confess it because... They were more concerned that everybody else continued to love them. Some of us are like that. Some of us are guilty of that. You know, we won't tell a certain friend because we know he'll be upset. We're not going to talk to him about Jesus because, you know what? The getting praise from that guy and being his friend is far more important than getting praise from God. Can you imagine that we do that? And we do. We're all guilty of it. We've done it at some place, sometime with some people. Well, well, this guy, this guy, he's 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 a dedicated, a dedicated Jewish rabbi, and I don't want to offend him. I don't want to upset him. I don't want him not to talk to me anymore because he's a good friend of mine. So I'm not going to talk to him about Jesus because I know that would be offensive to him. But what, would you really listen? You're going to die. That guy's going to die. You're going to stand before God. Now tell me whose, whose praise is more important. This life on earth is so short. You really want to keep... Well, I, I, I need 16,000 uh, followers on my Facebook, so I don't want to offend nobody. Are you crazy? You're going to stand before God. And, you know what Jesus says? I will deny you before the Father. Because you denied me before man. Oh, man, that's, that's not even in my notes. I got to watch this when we're done. This is good stuff. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. And Jesus cried out and said, whoever believes in me believes not in me, but in him who sent me. If you believe in Jesus Christ, it's not that so much that you believe in him, but you believe in the one who sent him. Why is that? Because they're the same. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're the same. Look what he says. And whoever sees me, sees him. Whoever sees Jesus Christ, sees the Father. I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I don't judge them. For I didn't come to judge the world, but to save the world. Hey, here's a good question. Why did Jesus come? Okay, all together now. 
good. When someone says to you, why did Jesus come? He came to save the world. He didn't come to condemn people. He didn't come to, to judge people. That, that's happening next time he comes. The one who rejects Jesus and does not receive his words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. Jesus has spoken the words of eternal life. You can't say, I didn't know. The, you can say, like, hey, I didn't know I didn't read the Bible. Well, well yeah, but I gave it to you to read. I, I revealed myself in the word of God. You know everything there is to know about me, everything I want you to know about me. I wrote it down and I gave it to you. Yeah, but I didn't read it. Ignorance is, is no excuse. If you don't read the word of God, you can't stand before Jesus on judgment day and say, well, I didn't know. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I, Jesus, have not spoken of my own authority. Jesus didn't just speak nilly-willy. He didn't say what he wanted to say. Just He's not like me. He didn't say what came to mind. I wish I could be like that. He spoke by the authority of God. God told him what to speak. And what did he tell him to speak? But the Father who sent me has given me a commandment. What to say and what to speak. God the Father told Jesus what to So his words are God's words. And I know that God's commandment is eternal life. That's what God the Father wanted Jesus to speak, was eternal life. So what I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. Again, all through John, we see this kind of writing. I and the Father are one. If you've seen him, you've seen me. If you've heard me, you've heard him. We're the same. People who tell you that, that Jesus isn't God, they're, they're wrong. They're absolutely wrong. There's no, there's no reason ever to read the If you read the Bible, you cannot come out of there saying Jesus isn't God. There's no, there's no way. If you tell me Jesus isn't God, I say you didn't read the Bible. Oh, yes, I did. No, you didn't. No possible way. So here we see Jesus explaining why the crowds continue in their unbelief in spite of witnessing all these miracles, all these wonderful things, Jesus, and the way he spoke with authority. They sat there and they listened and they watched, and yet they don't believe. So it brings us to two questions. Number one, what is unbelief? And number two, why don't people believe in Jesus? This is what we're going to look at from this passage. So we're, we're probably only going to get to the first question, but tonight we'll do the second question. Make sure you come back tonight, or you will never know, unless you watch it on video. So all followers of Jesus, we all have a strong desire to call men and women to Christ. We, we have a strong... We, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if anyone here is a follower of Jesus Christ, you want to share the good news about Jesus with other people. You want to. That's, that's built into us because as, as we ask God to forgive us for our sin, he fills us with his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's job is to embolden us, to, to, to make us want to go out and share the good news about Jesus Christ. Because of God's grace, we understand the joy that comes from a restored, restored relationship with us. Listen, if you're born again, you're a follower of Jesus Christ, and you don't have joy just bubbling up inside of you. I'm not talking happiness. Happiness is an emotion. I'm talking about joy. We're joyful all the time, even when we're going through troubles. We're joyful because we know God's in control. We know that we have peace and we have comfort that comes from God. We're always joyful. If you don't feel that way and you walk with Christ, it's because you haven't surrendered to Christ. You might have made a decision to follow him, but now you have to allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. And if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to work, eventually he'll be taken from you. Create in me a clean heart. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. He does that. If you continue in sin, you're not a follower of Jesus Christ. We need to stop. And, and, and you know what? Like, we've got to be careful with that. 
We need to stop sinning. When Jesus said to the woman, he says, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. It didn't mean she became perfect and, and, and now she's never going to sin again. That's not what it means. What he's saying is, is, is strive towards perfection. Be perfect as I am perfect. Be holy as I am holy. We don't become perfect by being a follower of Jesus, but we strive towards perfection. We strive not to sin. I don't want to sin. I hate sin because I'm a follower of Jesus and Jesus hates sin and I want to be just like him. So, so I've developed a hate for sin. That doesn't mean I don't sin. Everybody that's here knows I sin. How many people have I offended? Just put your hand up. No, no. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Sean. We, we try not to sin. We will sin. And when we sin, we have an advocate. We have a lawyer in Christ Jesus. He stands before the Father and he says, ignore that guy. He's dumb. He's trying his best. He's, he's giving it all. But, but, but he's, he's a sinner. Just like We're all sinners, man. We can't help it. How many people here know of somebody in this world that you just, you hate? Don't put your hand up. Sean, don't put your hand up. Yeah. No, we, we all have a problem with somebody. And we're not loving them like we're supposed to love them. Like, like we love ourselves. Isn't that the commandment of Jesus? Love your neighbor as yourself. Well, if you're not loving your neighbor as yourself, well, that's a sin. So we're all sinning. And, and, and what about the first commandment, the greatest commandment God gives us? There's only two commandments. Love, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, with everything that you are and everything that you have. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. There's only two commandments. Do you love God with everything that you have? No, you don't. I don't. I would love to. But I don't. Why? Because I'm a sinner. That's why I need Jesus Christ. We all need Jesus Christ. If anyone ever says to you, oh, I'm not a sinner anymore. I used to be, but I'm not now. If you say you're without sin, this is in 1 John. If you say you're without sin, you're calling God a liar. Think about that. You say you're without sin. God says, no, that's not true. You are with sin. That's why you need Jesus Christ. Though the crowds had seen and witnessed so many of Jesus' miracles, they continued in their unbelief. And this is exactly what John was preparing us for at the beginning of his book. John 1.11, he came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. Jesus came to those who knew him, his, his people, the, the Jews. They, they, they knew he was coming. And, and Jesus comes, the, the Old Testament, the first 39 books of your Bible, prophesy. They talk about this Messiah who's coming, and they tell everything about, he's going to be born in this town, he's going to do this, he's going to do that, he's going to, over a thousand stinking prophecies about this guy coming. He shows up, and he fulfills all those prophecies, and they're going like, well, we don't believe him. He came to his own, and his own didn't even receive him. That's incredible. And these guys, after they see these miracles, like right in front of them, they hear him talk with such authority and they still reject him. So what is unbelief? What is unbelief? There's a, there's a difference between unbelief and indecision. If, if my child comes to me and, and we're talking and I go, I say to my wife, I say, well, do you believe what they're saying? That's not unbelief. We just don't have enough information. So we call the kid back into the room and investigate further. Got the light on him. Got the sponge. You know. <laughs> and then the kid's done talking and we're still not sure. We do. So we call in a witness. We call in the sibling. And the sibling comes in and spews out all the truth. That wasn't unbelief. That was indecision. We're not sure. We don't have enough information. These people have enough information. They don't lack information. They've got it all. And they reject Jesus Christ outright. That's different. That's different. So, so in, in this situation, the, the difference between unbelief and indecision is huge. Unbelief is the conscious rejection of God and his word. Listen. 
You can't reject the Bible. You can't say, well, well, the Bible, well, there's all kinds of mistakes and stuff, and there's all kinds of problems with the Bible. But I tell you what, I tell you what, I believe in God. I, I'm a follower of Jesus, but I do not believe the Bible is true. You can't do that. You cannot separate the two. The word, the Bible, is Jesus Christ. He's called the word. John says in the beginning was the word. He's talking about Jesus, and you can see that all the way through John. He is the word. So, so, but the Bible was written by man, and it's full of mistakes and all kinds of contradictions. No, it's not. Show me one. Oh, I'll show you one. Yeah, show me one. I would be an idiot to be up here talking to you guys about something that's full of mistakes and contradictions. I'm not as dumb as you think I am. <laughs> You can't reject the word of God and say you believe in Jesus. And then you can't reject Jesus and say you believe in God. You can't do that either. Jesus points out in, in our passages today. He says, he says how closely he's tied to God himself, right? He talks about that. He says, to believe in Jesus is to believe in God. That's verse 44. To believe in Jesus is to believe in God. To see Jesus is to see God. That's verse 45. To listen to Jesus is to listen to God. That's in verse 49. You can't believe in God, but not in Jesus. Listen. I, I want to I correct something. It, it bothers me, and I don't know if it's a problem or not, but it bothers me when people say, I believe in God and Jesus. People say that a lot. I've heard that from so many people. Oh, yeah, I believe in God and Jesus. They're the same. Just say, I believe in God. Just say, I believe in Jesus. You're covering the whole thing. They're the same. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Exactly equal. Exactly equal according to the word of God. And they've lived in harmony from before time. And they will be in harmony until after time. And there's not, there's not Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're all equal. You've got to have an understanding of who God is before you can say, I believe in God. Well, if you believe in God, you believe in Jesus. If we fail to put our trust in Jesus, we cannot think that, he, that, that we will be accepted by God. When we stand before God the Father on Judgment Day, and he looks at us and says, well, how come you rejected Jesus? When you rejected him, you rejected me. When you rejected the Bible, you rejected me. Listen, if we don't, back to the Bible thing, back to the Bible, we should make a show. If, if you don't believe the Bible to be true, then who is Jesus Christ? Where do you get your information from? Have you made it up? Well, I feel as though Jesus... That's a feeling. You trust your feelings? Some days I feel like I should jump off the sand tower. Well, with one of those parachute things. Don't trust your feelings. But, but how do I know for sure that, that Jesus is God? Read the word of God. God always moves and works by his word. When Jesus is called the word, God always works through his word. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, they work through Jesus Christ. So, so in the beginning... God created. God is Jesus. That's why Colossians says, through him all things were created. Talking about Jesus. That whole chapter is about Jesus. Through Jesus Christ all things. Did you know Jesus created all things? No, I thought it was just God. God is Jesus. Jesus is God. It's the same person. It's three separate persons, but one God. The same God, but three separate persons, all equal. Jesus spoke everything into existence. It's through his word. He's the word. And he spoke everything into existence. Well, I don't believe that. That's fine. Might as well go golfing right now. Jesus is God. He created all things. 
It was by his word. And that's how God works, through his word. He breathes, he speaks things into existence. Romans 10, 17 says, so faith comes from hearing. Where do you think you get faith in God? Some people say, well, well, God gives you faith. God doesn't give you faith. God doesn't give you faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. If you don't read the word of God, if you don't listen to the word of God, you can't have faith in Jesus Christ. Well, I believe in God and Jesus, but I certainly don't believe the Bible. Well, you don't believe in God, and that's why you called him God and Jesus. You want, to, you want to be sure that you read the word of God. God has always worked through his word. That's how he works. You can't have Jesus without accepting his teachings on everything. And, and you can't go through the Bible and pick and choose. There's churches now that are saying the Bible is full of mistakes. It's errant. The Bible can't be full of mistakes. Because if it is, which ones are mistakes and which ones aren't? Well, I like the one, I like the one on, on, you know, stealing. We shouldn't steal. The one about adultery, I think that's okay, though. I think that was a mistake. They didn't mean to put that in there. I shouldn't be having sex with my neighbor. Mm. You can't do that. You've got to accept the whole word of God. You've got to accept. You've got to, you've got to accept that there is sin. You have to accept that there is a Satan. You have to accept that there is a hell. You can't take those things out. If you want to do that, you join the Jehovah's Witnesses because that's what they believe. Listen, the word of God, King David says, it's a lamp to my feet. It helps me so I don't stumble and fall. In the Proverbs we read, in the, in the Psalms we read too, that, that it's, it's, I hide the word of God in my heart so that I don't sin against God. Well, well if you don't read the book, how are you going to know if you're sinning against God? You don't know what he expects, what he likes, what he wants. If, if you love somebody, don't you want to know everything there is to know about them? You know, my wife has been studying me for 47 years. It's still a mystery. Huge mystery, George. Huge mystery. Thanks for backing me up, buddy. <laughs> I've been following Jesus for 32 years. And I tell you, I read the word of God because I want to know everything there is to know about him because I love him. I love him so much because he first loved me. If you love somebody, you want to know everything there is to know about them. Unbelief is because you don't read the word of God. If you read the word of God, you get to know who Jesus Christ is. You'll fall in love with him. You'll want to follow him. You'll understand the sacrifice that he made for you. It's huge, man. It's a huge thing. Please. The one reason that most people don't read their Bible is because Satan has talked them into not doing it. He's afraid you're going to fall in love with Jesus Christ. You've got to read the word of God. You can't just come to church once on a Sunday. You can't just read your daily bread and read one verse a day. It's going to take you forever. Sit down and read a book of the Bible. If you have trouble understanding, you get stuck on something, write me. I'll confuse you. <laughs> God loves us so much. Tonight we'll look at why don't people accept Jesus Christ? Why do they avoid Jesus Christ? It's, it's a very interesting question. Today was about unbelief. Why are there so many people that won't believe even when we see miracles every day? Every day each of us see miracles. You know what? We, we just fluff it off. Well, that's just the way things go. That's evolution. Things just keep going. When you see your child being born at the hospital, do you say, wow, evolutionary theory is wonderful? No, you just saw a miracle. God knitted that child together in his mother's womb. That's a miracle of God. You can't just fluff that away and say, well, that's a coincidence. Look what came out. No. God loves us so much. Everybody stand up. You all been sitting too long? Father, we thank you so much for your word. We couldn't know you without it. You've, you've saved it for us for this time. All those years that have gone by, 
And yet the Bible is not tainted. It's not been changed. It's not been corrupted. There's so much proof that the Bible is true. We have more proof for the Word of God than we have for any book of antiquity. The Bible is so provable. Sometimes people just don't want to know because if it's true, then they'd have to read it. God, I pray in Jesus' name that each of us get a desire in our hearts to sit down and read the Word of God, to make that a regular study. The more we read the Word of God, the more we meditate on the Word of God, the less we'll sin against you. The more we'll fall in love with you. The more we'll look forward to being in heaven with Jesus Christ for eternity. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Listen, if there's anybody here today who's, who's never really believed in Jesus Christ, maybe, maybe, you've, maybe you've been rejecting Jesus, you didn't even realize it. You don't have a relationship with him. You need to be restored to a relationship with God. He created you to be with him forever. If you want to get in a right relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm going to ask you to do something. This isn't the law. This isn't the law. You don't have to do this. I just think this is a great way of doing it. If you come forward, I want to pray with you. People are going to come and pray with you. But if you come forward, you're saying to God, I want you to forgive me for my sin. I want you to fill me with your righteousness. I want your Holy Spirit to come and live inside of me. The power of God within you. By you coming forward, you're saying, I want to follow Jesus Christ. I want to follow Jesus Christ. Listen, we were all lost. We sang about it. We were lost in our sin. We were dead in our sin. And Christ wants us to be alive. He wants to give us life. He wants to give us life eternal. So he came to earth. God came to earth and became a human being so he could die in our place. He couldn't die on a cross if he was God, just God. He he needed to be a 100% human. He's still 100% God, but he was 100% human. Exactly like us. And he hung on the cross because he was sinless. He was able to take our sin upon himself. We can have our sins forgiven because of Christ's payment on the cross. We deserve death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. We deserve eternal death. But God wants to give us eternal life. What's the problem? He wants to give us joy, joy unspeakable. He wants to give us peace that passes all understanding. That's what God wants to give us. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, or maybe you did it one time and you've wandered away, it's time. Come forward. By you coming forward, people get to see who you are. They get to pray for you. They get to encourage you. Come forward and give your life to Jesus Christ. God bless you, sister. God bless you. else here. Listen, if you're scared, grab the hand of the person next to you and come forward. Natasha, will pray with Donna? Thank you. Thank you. God's talking to you. Don't put this off. It's time for new life. New life in Christ. Stop living in the guilt. Stop living in those shackles. Be free. God wants you to be free. You know the truth, the truth will set you free. And when you're free, you're free indeed. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You want to talk about a miracle? I'll tell you what, here's a miracle. These two people, according to the Word of God, they were lost in their sin, they were walking in darkness. But you've just seen them get transported from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his great light. Once they were dead in their sin and trespass, now they're alive in Christ Jesus. You just watched resurrection happen. 
You know what else you just watched? You watched the Holy Spirit of God coming and living inside of them. Whatever else was there before is gone. And now the Holy Spirit. They are now the temple of the living God. Isn't that fantastic? If that don't charge you up, you got a problem. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these two lives that have been restored. Thank you so much for your goodness to us. God, you've said you want none to perish, but that all would come to repentance, that all would turn to you. You're a very patient God, but we know the time is coming when we won't be able to make that choice anymore. I pray for anybody else in this room who's never chosen to follow you. I pray, God, that all week long they would be thinking about these words and that they would want to turn to you, surrender their lives to you so that they too could have eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing together a closing kiss so sweet to trust in Jesus.